set the record both on the way to New York and then again beat our record by about 30 minutes on the way back. A couple weeks ago, I realized I was running out of time before the weather kind of got too bad to do this uh, run across country. I had been waiting to actually buy a new Model S, potentially partly for the run, and also because we rent out Teslas in the Bay Area. I thought, great combination. I can justify the purchase and do a cannonball run with that vehicle. Unfortunately, Tesla being the company that they are, they delayed our delivery that was supposed to be delivered in August all the way till December. So I had to go ahead and, and kind of find other means of getting a car. So I found three Teslas available to rent online and reserved them and then immediately canceled. So I could message the host saying, hey, you know, it, can I borrow your car, you know, rent your car for a quick one week long drive to New York and back. And I was hoping that they would kind of understand what that coded message was and I in my, the little note, I said, please give me a call if you have any questions. Finally, one of those three hosts gave me a call. I had a discussion with him basically saying, I want to do this cannibal run. I understand that I'm taking on all the liability, but I will also be swapping out your wheels. They had the 21 inch wheels on their Model S. And so I needed the 19s to maximize my efficiency. And conveniently, that's also for comfort. So I, I found a set of wheels that I could also swap on. I rented those as well from a, another friend. That car was already based down in LA, not too far from the hotel there. So we swapped the wheels over at my buddy's shop at Unplugged Performance and then pulled up and got, got all set. My cousin was my co-pilot. He had never driven a Tesla before at all, let alone a Tesla with a yoke. So that was interesting. Uh, we spent a, a, about an hour and a half just having him drive around town, kind of figuring out how to shift the gears on the touch screen and just get comfortable in it because again, you've never driven a Tesla before. I told him about the different charging standards, uh, what we had to look out for, such as uh, with the version two superchargers, you have to look out, they've got the uh, chrome handle on the back. Those ones do end up power sharing. So you may end up in a situation where you pull up and you're actually getting half the power that you otherwise could, whereas the new version three, 250 kilowatt stations charge significantly faster and guarantee that higher charge rate. So less concern if we get to a V3, but across the country, I knew we were gonna hit about 50% V3 and 50% V2. And so I wanted to call that kind of stuff out to him, make sure he knew how to raise the suspension, you know, what, what to look out, like I said, for charging. The Tesla records for cannonballing was actually first set by Tesla. They didn't quite call it a cannonball back when they did it, but they did the uh, shortest charge time from uh, LA to New York and actually held the Guinness record for that. And then uh, a couple years bounced around and a couple other EV records were taken, almost all by Teslas. Back in 2017, I briefly took the record for an EV. When the Model 3 was launched, I recognized that the efficiency with charging was just gonna make it so much easier to beat the previous record that was held by at the time a, I think it was a Model S 85D by Jordan Hart and Bradley D'Souza. And so I went ahead and basically took my brand new Model 3 a week after I bought it. Again, with unplugged performance, I had them actually wrap the car orange. And while I was still employed by Tesla, I grouped up with one of my good friends that worked with me as well. And we drove from LA to New York only one week after buying the brand new you know, VIN 297 Model 3. We set the record back then, but because I was an employee at Tesla, Tesla wasn't particularly happy and wasn't really willing to let us share that information that we had set that record. So I had to kind of stay quiet, uh, but Alex Roy heard about what we did, got in touch with me, asked me just a couple of details, and I, I told him it was mostly just a matter of efficiency and that we were driving at a relatively tame speed. And so two months later, Alex Roy went to beat that record and uh, did handily. It wasn't too hard for him to beat our record. After Alex Roy, I think Kyle Connor was able to get it originally in a Tesla as well. And then re most recently before my record, Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Motoring, his team uh, of three was able to set the record in a Porsche Taycan. That was an absolute surprise because up until now it had basically only been Teslas competing for this record. Out of Spec Motoring set a time of 44 hours and 25 minutes. So we drove a 2021 Model S long range with the 19 inch Tempest wheels and we actually had to swap them from the 21 inch Arachnids. 
It's the brand new, you know, highest performance shy of the Model S Plaid uh, electric vehicle that you can buy today. It's got 405 miles of range. The Plaid, on the other hand, with the same wheels would have had 395 miles of range. So it's just ever so slightly less efficient. But overall, it could have gone either way. We could have set the record with either car, but I wanted to give myself the best chance of setting the record. I didn't want to make any mistakes. You know, it's not a free thing to do. It's it's relatively expensive to go out and rent this vehicle and 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 rent the tires and, and all the time. So I wanted to make sure to give myself the best opportunity to set this record. Our driving strategy was based on, we wanted to beat Kyle's record and looking at, uh, there's an app called A Better Route Planner. And we use that to basically estimate exactly what speed we would need to drive to tie the out of spec motoring record, as well as beat it incrementally by a few hours. And once I saw that the speed needed to just tie the record was only about 112% the speed limit with how fast the car would charge, I, I saw that it was gonna be relatively easy. So, you know, in a 25 zone, you're not even going a, more than a couple miles per hour faster than the speed limit. And, you know, in, in 80 zones, obviously you're going, you know, noticeably faster, but it wasn't gonna be a problem to just tie the record assuming it was a clear run, which anyone who has ever done a cannonball knows that a clear run is near impossible. But 112% of the speed limit seemed doable with a target of 130% of the speed limit. And again, that is maintained without traffic and everything. It, it, it seemed doable. So we just estimated a few increments of tying the out of spec motoring record, beating it by one hour, beating it by two hours, beating it by three hours, and just set that kind of as our aspirational goal there to beat him by three hours. Every charger we'd check, you know, down to the minute, were we, were we there on the two hour mark? Were we there on the one hour mark? Were we potentially not gonna beat Kyle? And, and uh, that, that's kind of how we kept track throughout was just every single charger, we just made sure that we had somewhere around 10% battery state of charge pulling in and somewhere within a few minutes of uh, one of those estimated times. 130% the speed limit wasn't particularly hard, but we also did uh, set a bit of a cap on that where for the most part, uh, and, and this was in our calculations as well, that it was 130% the speed limit with a cap around 92 miles per hour, 93 miles per hour. And that's mostly because autopilot has a limit at 90 miles per hour or 150 kilometers per hour. 150 kilometers per hour works out to 93 miles per hour. So if you switch the display, you can still use autopilot up until then. I probably used autopilot about 50% of the time when I was driving and I know my co-pilots used it less than that, but it was just a good barometer for, for a level of comfort that we knew we could beat it by three hours with 130% the local speed limit with a local maxima of 93. So in some areas we would exceed that if we had to or wanted to and, and to make up time, but otherwise we could cruise, we could almost coast at kind of 93 miles per hour across most of the country. The only countermeasures we ended up using was Waze. It was a stock car, not tinted windows, no other modifications for aerodynamics other than swapping the wheels. So we didn't really have any countermeasures that a normal person wouldn't have. Uh, and that's kind of a goal that I wanted to set and I'm really proud of. You know, we, we briefly did use a radar detector on the way back from New York. Josh Allen, my co-pilot, wanted to try it and, and, and see if it was effective, but the radar detector that I have is so old, it was picking up so many false flags that it was better just to use Waze, which was picking up almost every single cop that we saw out there. I think there was maybe one or two that were just, you know, the, there was no police officers in those vehicles. So it actually pulled up every cop that had a cop in the vehicle. Then at one point, just to see, because we had plenty of open road and it was you know, no cars around, it was relatively safe to do so. I know that the car hit a maximum of 155. I believe they're currently software limited to 165. The best time, it's hard for me to say because I was relatively conservative with my overall speed, but you are negotiating speed with charging efficiency. And what we really paced out was we were stopping at most of the faster chargers along the way. So... I would say it's probably possible to drop another hour and a half, two hours with slightly more aggressive driving if the charging infrastructure is there. I know with we with our traffic situation on the way back, we hit about 30 minutes of traffic. Honestly, we hit about an hour of traffic that we scooted around and, and shaved 30 minutes off of until a semi blocked us. I could easily see an hour and a half coming off, maybe two. I believe that electric vehicles are the future for basically everyone. This is starting kind of more in sedans and more of the uh, existing efficient vehicles. We're starting to see pickup trucks 
uh, and semi trucks taking on electric vehicle technology. So I, I think we're going to see a future where everyone is driving electric. That, that's my personal opinion. I think there will still be the hobbyists that have gas cars and there, there's absolutely still going to be a market for that. But I think your your average commuter, your business you know, executive, I think people are going to find themselves behind better electric vehicles in, in just a few years. So I'm just excited to be a part of the narrative storytelling of here's how electric vehicles are getting better. And to, for me, at least, showing how close EVs are getting to the you know historic cannonball record or the overall cannonball record shows people just how capable EVs are. You know, no one realistically wants to drive from LA to New York in less than two days. And the fact that you can already do that in an EV shows that it's capable for long distance road tripping for most average consumers. They're, you know, they're not gonna push it quite as hard. And many people didn't know that they even could get coast to coast, let alone get there in less than two days. Our average stop time was only about 16 minutes. We definitely did not have long stops because the new Model S just charges so fast. And then we only had about an hour and a half to two hours between each stop as well. So I, I don't know exactly the number of stops that we hit. I think we stopped at 16 or so superchargers. We had initially planned to hit about 15, but moving a couple things around in, with last minute planning and just seeing where we could find version three superchargers instead of version two, charging less and, and kind of working that efficiency just down to the last little bit. The previous times when I've done this, I tried to push my car to zero miles, which I thought was you know absolutely maximizing my efficiency. But what I found is that the Teslas, especially this new one, prefers to be plugged in before it hits 5% and really at a maximum of about 12% to really get the, the fastest charge curve. So we always tried to get in around 10 or 5%. Uh, that was kind of our maximum speed and efficiency. And that's where I think it will be hard for someone to take the record from us because it, 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 you really have to balance speed with efficiency still. I did the Cannonball from LA to New York and New York to LA both in one week because I felt that, well, for one, I didn't want to ship the car. And for the second, I, I know a lot of people will try to do it just in one direction, but then you basically waste all that time and energy to get the car back. And so I, I figure why not at least make an attempt on the way to New York and then try for the you know historic Cannonball record on the way back, try to get from New York to LA. And you know, if you set the record on the way there, you can try hard on the way back. If you don't set the record on the way there, you can learn, you can reset and calculate to see if you can make it on the way back. So in my mind, it's kind of a no-brainer if you're going to make a cannonball attempt, you know, especially if you're financially a little bit limited, why not make an attempt uh, on the way back? My cousin and I made the trip out to New York. And during that trip, I actually found out that my co-pilot that I had, uh, I actually had two co-pilots as probably maybes that both ended up being no's. So during the last kind of legs, I had my cousin driving while I was calling up various other potential co-pilots that didn't even know I was doing the cannonball run, said, uh, hey, would you be able to join? And the seventh person I called was finally able to join, Josh Allen. I met him out at Pikes Peak. He was able to join me for the drive back. And so I had about 36 hours before the turnaround. He had to fly out basically the very next day. So within 24 hours of receiving a phone call asking to join the cannonball, he was out there in New York. We had just enough time to kind of reset, freshen up, and turn around and come back. And so, I, you know, it was l probably less than a 36 hour turnaround, but I had just enough time to rest up and get back home uh, and, and do the cannibal run again on the way back. And again, we set the record both on the way to New York and then again beat our record by about 30 minutes on the way back. On the way to New York, we set the record at 42 hours and 52 minutes. And then we turned around and came back and set the record again at 42 hours and 17 minutes. So that is the new record to beat. Felt incredible. I definitely was <laughs> really proud of the fact that we were able to set it on the way there. I, I didn't anticipate that. You know, Obviously the wind is kind of at our back on the way to New York, but uh, to set it on the way there, it was just a matter of how much further can we push it on the way back. And it felt great to know that you know I'm able to help prove what electric vehicles are capable of. We all love Amazon, but most of us have had that experience where you buy something with a lot of glowing reviews that shows up and it's just a piece of garbage and it wasn't what you thought you were buying. Unfortunately, Amazon can be full of bad actors and fake reviews and things that just don't live up to what you think is gonna come in a day or two after you order it. That's why New on Amazon has been developed. It was developed by Patrick Cupolari, a friend of the channel, a good storyteller who's talked about BMWs and McLaren F1s and things like that. And he's a huge e-commerce expert 
and you can learn more about that on his YouTube channel. But he built a site of trusted sellers, well-reviewed products, and things that he actually knows will show up looking the way that you want them to. And so it's a great way to filter out some of the noise and some of the bad products that you might otherwise discover on Amazon. So check out New on Amazon at the link in the description below and thank them for supporting VinWiki this month.